to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. In India, there is a story going on that is troubling. A story of a, uh, an eight-year-old girl who was kidnapped, taken to a Hindu temple, and raped and killed. Now, this story touches upon a lot of different issues. One, there is an issue of uh, the fact that um, men in India uh, have, uh, the, the, the stories that keep coming out is the abuse of women in India. So that one, it, 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 it hinges on this, this uh, anger that we have about, this righteous anger that we have against those who mistreat women. And the mistreating of especially an eight-year-old child and how, how terrible it is. On top of that, this story goes to another aspect because the girl, the eight-year-old girl, she comes from a Muslim family. A Muslim family that is a nomadic family and they herd cattle and they kill cows, which to Hindus are sacred. And so the story goes that the uh, one of the, the chief families of the, that Hindu temple had called for this, uh, some retaliation for killing cows. So they took this eight-year-old girl from this Muslim family and raped her and killed her. So now it touches upon so many things, right? Within Indian politics and with our Indian community, it touches upon feminism and the, the role of women and the necessity to protect our women. It touches upon the fact of this, this long-standing battle between Muslims and Hindus in India. But also, it touches upon our basic humanity. One question that we can ask ourselves is, why did this happen and how could this happen? It is very awkward that this happened in a Hindu temple. If anyone, and I know many are, familiar with the old Malayalam or Tamil or Hindi films, you will know that when you go to the temple, what happens in the film? You pray to the temple goddess or god, and what happens? The god comes alive and comes and tells you what to do and protects you and helps you. But in this situation, in this Hindu temple, in real life, there was no Hindu god to protect this girl. There was no Muslim God to protect this girl. And so we as Christians have to ask, was where was our God to protect this girl? Where was our God and why did he allow such terrible, terrible suffering for this young child? What is our answer? If someone, a Muslim or a Hindu, another person of Indian descent comes and says, I'm having trouble believing in, in the Hindu God now because of all this. What does the Christian God say? Why didn't he do anything? What is your response? What is your response to why didn't our God do anything? Simple, right? Is there a simple answer for this? The simplest of answers comes from you have to go back to the beginning. Before we were created, why did God create humanity? Does anyone know the answer? Why did God create humanity? God created humanity because of one thing, love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one, united in one. That oneness is, you, founds unity in love. And their love was so strong that the, our God, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, our God, had so much love that our God wants to share that love. And so from the outpouring of love, our God created us. He created us, and He created us to also share in that love. That means that in order for love to happen, you need one very important ingredient. Do you know what you need in order for love to happen? Freedom. 
You need the freedom to love. Without freedom, there is no love. Was that eight-year-old girl who was kidnapped loved in that temple? No. She was not loved because she had no freedom. Freedom is the key to love. Husbands and wives, you know that freedom is the key to love. Uh, love takes root in the fact of your partner coming to you and choosing you and taking care of you out of their free will. And when they do something that is kind from their own heart, not because you told them to do it, you feel that tinge of love because they thought of you in such a way to take care of you. Our God wants us to love. He wants us to share in that love. So what does He do? When He created us, He gave us freedom. Free will. The ability to choose. The ability to choose to love or not to love. The ability to act. Because He didn't want robots. In everything else that He created, in the sun, the moon, the stars, in everything else that He did, the angels even, none of them have a choice like we have a choice. Our God gave us the choice and the free will. And you know what? It is out of that love that He wants us to act. But what happens when we have the free will, the freedom? We do absolutely terrible things. We do absolutely terrible things. I'm not condemning, I'm not, I'm not only condemning the, 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 the Hindus that had killed this girl because they're sharing the same humanity that we have. Christians, I can take so many examples of those who call themselves followers of Christ and doing terrible things. We just, in, our, in Kerala, just not too long ago, we killed a man for over 200 rupees of food. So our people are not any better. Free will calls us to love, but we often choose, in not, we often choose not to love. So now we know why this can happen. Because God gives us that free will to allow for an eight-year-old girl to get killed in this way. But couldn't God have come in and just done something? Couldn't God have done something to save this girl? The answer is yes. And He did. Our God did. He did. And that's why we're all here. <laughs> that's the great part. We're all here this Sunday because of what He did. There is one act that He has done that saves the man who was killed for 200 rupees of food. He did one act that saves Asifa, the girl, the eight-year-old girl killed. He does one act that saves not only those who have lived, but all of us. You know what that one act that our God did? Our God died on the cross. And when our God died on the cross, He just didn't just die on the cross. Our God defeated death three days later. And that is how He saves. And that is the action that He did. He knew our God is the omnipotent, omnipresent. He knows everything. He knew that there would be such terrible people in the world that a, 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 an eight-year-old girl would one day be killed in a Hindu temple. He knew Asifa. And even knowing Asifa, he decided, in knowing the tragedy that would happen, he, 2,000 years ago, decided that he would become man and become part of our humanity. And taking on our humanity, he would die for us. And in dying for us, he would give us the key to salvation. The key defeating death and giving us the opportunity for eternal life. So Asifa will most, uh, most assuredly and hopefully by God's grace be granted that eternal kingdom because of the suffering that she has under endured. So she is saved just like we are saved. 
Because our God is a loving God. And so if someone comes and asks you, if someone comes and asks you, why didn't your God do anything? What is your response? Our God already did 2,000 years ago. Our God already saved us. Our God still is saving us. You know how He's still saving us? Because of what He did in today's Gospel. In John's Gospel, chapter 21, we hear that the disciples are toiling and struggling and they're working and they, guess what? They get no fish as they are trying to fish all night. And they are struggling and they can't do it. And what happens? When they heed the voice of their God, of their Savior, Jesus Christ, they are able to catch more fish than they are able to carry. And that's also why we are here today. Because even though our God gives us the freedom, even though our God has already saved us, our God is still, still speaking to us. Our God is still inspiring us. He is giving us His Holy Spirit as a flame that burns within us, that calls us to act. He gives us direction in what to do and how to do it. And if we follow His way, we will have our nets full more than what we can handle. And what is He calling us to do? He's calling us to stand up for the Asifas. He's calling us to feed the hungry instead of killing them and hanging them. He's calling us to do the good works, to love each other as He has loved us. So what will you do with your free will? What will you do with what God has given you? Will you stand up, call upon Him this day, on this Sunday, and ask Him, Lord, I am suffering, I am struggling, I am trying to carry and I am trying to find the fish but I am toiling in all night and nothing is happening. God, give me direction. And when we turn to Him and ask Him for that direction, when we turn to Him and ask Him for His help, what will happen? He will give us the direction that will continue to save our souls. So let us follow His way. Let us follow Him and let us not look to the world and what they have done but let us follow His love, His example. Let us follow His cross. All glory and honor to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit.